Breaking news now on our top story as we get NRA reaction to the sweeping new gun control legislation introduced about three hours ago by half a dozen Democratic senators. Here is Senator Dianne Feinstein announcing the legislation. Today, my colleagues and I are introducing a bill to prohibit the sale, transfer, manufacture, and importation of assault weapons and large capacity ammunition feeding devices that can accept more than 10 rounds. Let me tell you what the bill will not do. It will not affect hunting or sporting firearms. Instead, the bill protects hunters and sportsmen by protecting 2,200 specifically named weapons used for hunting or sporting purposes. And now the NRA response, quote, Senator Feinstein has been trying to ban guns from law abiding citizens for decades. It's disappointing, but not surprising that she is once again focused on curtailing the Constitution instead of prosecuting criminals or fixing our broken mental health system. The American people know gun bans do not work, and we are confident Congress will reject Senator Feinstein's wrong headed approach. Joining me now, Jonah Goldberg. He's editor at large of the National Review and a Fox News contributor. And Josh Block is a former spokesman for the presidential campaigns of Bill Clinton and Al Gore. Gentlemen, welcome. So, wow, I mean, this is more sweeping than what we had in place from 94 to 2004. Obviously, there are questions about whether this can pass. But I want to ask you, Jonah, just looking at it, the things that jump out to me are they're going to lower the criteria for classifying something as an assault weapon. This could now, um, they, 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 they prohibit semi-automatic rifles, handguns, and shotguns that can accept a detachable magazine and have one military characteristic. Under the old ban, it used to have to have multiple military characters. Now just one and a detachable magazine. When you start to mess with people's handguns, they get upset. There's that plus, I want to talk to you about some, some other more controversial ones, but let's start there. Your thoughts. Yeah, and also you have to register the grandfathered in weapons, and you have to prov you have to prove that you're storing them safely. So there, it kind of reminds me. I had a friend who in college had a painting company, and their unofficial motto was "We may be slow, but we're expensive." And <laughs> um, it seems to me a lot of this legislation is intended to create opportunities for more legislation, to create opportunities for lawsuits against gun manufacturers, to uh, sort of lay the groundwork. For, for, to, for filling in all of the loopholes that are in this. Because as of, as of right now, it's sort of ridiculous. On one of the other networks, they had coverage of it saying it was a big new ban on assault weapons with many assault weapons being exempted. And the problem is the only definition of an assault weapon is the definition that's in the bill. So how do you exempt an assault weapon from an assault weapon ban when the only understanding of what the, an assault weapon is is what it's named in the legislation in the first place. I know my head's already confusing. spinning. My head's already spinning, but I can tell you this. <laughs> I can tell you this, Josh. Uh, there are a lot of people out there who are not going to want to lose their handgun because it has a detachable magazine, as semi-automatic handguns have, so many, and one military-like characteristic, which is a pretty low threshold for some weapons to meet. Nor, nor are they going to want to have to be reported um, to have a background check on if they buy a certain amount of ammo. Well, look, I think there's probably a lot of members of Congress who aren't going to want to lose their seats over these issues either, so it's not clear whether this piece of legislation itself will pass. I think there are four different versions of, uh, of gun control legislation we're likely to see come out of the Senate uh, before the House acts, and which of them and which aspects uh, will go forward, we don't really know. It is clear that, you know, according to a recent poll by the Washington Post, 58 percent of Americans do support an assault weapons ban, including 45 percent of, of gun-owning households. And this bill, as we understand, it uh, is, does not take anyone's guns away. It simply says these are guns that we shouldn't be selling. On the ammunition question, Megan, it's an interesting point. You know, these are very dangerous. Some of, the, some of the, the, the ammo is, you know, armor piercing. It's very, very dangerous. And, and in the way that there are background checks uh, for, for guns, and by the way, nine out of 10 Americans support universal background checks, there is on no. Guns. Uh, on, on guns. guns, right. There, there is uh, on not guns, on right? ammo. Mm -hmm. There is no, there is no uh, regulation on, on the buying of ammunition. So this is an area in which people are going to begin to explore uh, that question. And then it goes a step further, Jonah, because it, apparently um, Dick Blumenthal, senator uh, from Connecticut, has proposed that retailers would then have to report to law enforcement anyone who buys a certain amount of ammunition. Now, I realize what that's about. You know, somebody looks like they're stocking up to go to war. 
we got to be concerned. But there are people in this country who love their guns and they buy a lot of ammo and they do it for sport and they do it because they enjoy it and they do it because they want to feel protected in a community that doesn't have a large law enforcement uh, you know, size and so on. And th I, I know, I know these people. We hear from them. They, th they are not going to be happy about this. Yeah, they, they also buy it in bulk because it's cheaper that way. <laughs> um, yeah, right. And uh, I, I, look, I, I think that a lot of this is, uh, this is a gift from heaven for the NRA, because the NRA can look at what they want to do in this thing and say, see, we told you. And I, th I think Josh is probably right. I think Dianne Feinstein was probably pretty careful to not make this constitutionally suspect. Um, but it does lay down all of these things that the NRA says, you know, uh, they want to come for your guns, we're going to give up your rights piecemeal, uh, we're going to get lists like they did in Australia so the cops can come to your house and take your guns, you can be sued if your guns weren't properly stored. Um, all of these things are laying down markers. I mean, Dianne Feinstein's, you know, perfectly honest that she would like to go much farther than where right. this legislation goes, right. and this sets up the possibility for that. The, the other thing that jumped out at me, Josh, is so you can, you can keep your gun, so if your gun that you have now is going to be banned under Dianne Feinstein's proposal, you get to keep it. There is a grandfather clause, in other words. But you, then you would have to register. There'd have to be a register of your gun, and there'd have to be a registry of all law-abiding gun owners. And the NRA has already come out and said, or um, said that that is not that. There's no need for a national registry of law-abiding gun owners. Well, look, it's going to be hard to catalog every gun we have in America. You know, there are 250 million weapons out there. So I, I don't know exactly how practical that is. Certainly, if you sell that gun, there's going to be have to some kind of registry or some kind of background check on the person who's buying it. On the question of these other, you know, uh, on reporting purchases, you know, it's important to remember, you know, when people buy large quantities of fertilizer today, uh, the government has to be notified and there's some kind of check that takes place. So there are there are rules in place that, that go along with some of this commerce to notify us when these things happen. It wouldn't be that out of, out of the ordinary to do that on on weapons uh, if we're doing it on fertilizer so yeah. you can you can understand how, how that would make sense well we'll see I mean right now I, all everybody's saying that they don't have the support for this um, in the in the Democratic controlled Senate but you got the, the former Obama for America team out there pushing for his for his agenda and and does that turn out to be a game-changer only time will tell guys thank you both so much thank you pleasure